Alright guys, Pitching Ace 88. Uh, we are in... Where are we? We're in the Dantooine Ruins. Uh, we were able to do the... Okay, get out of my way. We were able to do the west, now we're going to do the east, or vice versa. Not really entirely sure. But let's open this door. And then we have this Guardian Droid. I'm going to use a Ion Grenade, and hopefully that'll hurt him. So that, that actually worked pretty well. But just keep attacking these guys, they're not that bad. Yeah, so this game brought to you by GamingOne.com. Not cool. So he has that ability, as you can see. Okay, he did that again, that's annoying. Okay, now I'm going to be Candorous just because I think he can... I think he has improved shot. I think I think he'll be able to hit him. It's only two damage, but it's better than what I was doing. Ooh. So Basila has some of the better abilities. You really, you really. Ooh, disabled droid seems to do a lot. So I'm gonna continue doing disabled droid because it's taking 10 HP off of him. Luckily, disabled droid doesn't doesn't take too much force away from me, so we can actually do a lot of damage with these guys. Now, the next upgrade, which I will be trying to get probably as soon as possible if I can remind myself, will be to get the destroyed droid, I think. That's uh, very, very effective with these guys. Alright, 400 experience points received. Sure. Okay, nothing. So let's go activate this terminal. So you want to... Press a button, press many buttons at random, talk to the computer, insert data pad. Uh, you want to talk to the computer so it can read your voice. So, death giving seeds. So that's going to be the desert, volcanic, and barren. And that breaks the seal. So th these guys are actually really pretty tough. Because their defenses really don't allow you to hurt them with regular weapons. You need... Uh, Bastila's destroy droid if you really want to do any type of damage to these guys. Now that we've done that, we're going to talk to this guy. You have proven yourself worthy. The sealed door is open. If you wish to learn the secret to the Star Forge, you must pass through the door to the room beyond. Okay, I'll be going. I shall remain here as programmed by the builders. So I'm going to head on through. Going straight. Now we're going to learn about the Star Forge. So let's continue going forward. Cutscene. This, this must be what Revan and Malik found when they entered this temple. This must be where their journey down the dark side began. What is it? This is a, a map, some sort of intergalactic navigational chart. Revan and Malik must have used this to lead them to the Starforge. We could use this map to follow their path and find the Starforge ourselves. But we must be wary. They may have laid traps or concealed what they found. I still don't understand about the Starforge. What does it do? I, I don't know. But Revan and Malik were very interested in finding it. It must be a tool of some type. Or maybe a weapon. Perhaps the Council can tell us more. But I think this map might be the key to finding the Starforge, whatever it is. See this world here? This looks like Korriban, a Sith world. And if that's Korriban, then this is Kashek, and Tatooine, and here's Manan. But there are pieces missing. Incomplete hyperspace coordinates, corrupted data. And there doesn't seem to be anything indicating where the Starforge itself might be. Perhaps those worlds have more clues? I was thinking that too. This map can't take us to the Starforge, but I know that Revan and Malik visited Korriban at least once. Perhaps they discovered something more there. They may have found something on each of the other worlds that completed this map. Maybe if we find all the pieces, they'll lead us to the Starforge, in some way to destroy it. We must inform the Council of what we've discovered. They must decide our next course of action, though I suspect our task has only just begun. Okay, so let's check out our journal. 
that was a completed quest of investigating the ruins. Um, <laughs> let's talk to these guys, see if they need any more How talking I to. I want to talk about that dream. It was less of a dream and more of a vision. A vision the two of us shared. But I am certainly willing to answer any questions the Jedi Council did not. Uh, I like, kind of like the idea of her being in my dreams. I still don't understand why we shared this vision. Are you wondering why we shared the vision? Or why we even received it in the first place? To the first, I can only repeat the answer that the Council gave us. Our fates are linked. And for two as strong as we are in the Force, that amounts to a near physical bond. As to the second, I truly don't have an answer for you. The Force works as it will. And perhaps we should be grateful for what we've been given. But how did our fates become linked? I, I don't know. Believe me. I certainly don't find the prospect of being joined to you enjoyable in any fashion. What? What? Well, thanks a lot. Oh, please, forgive me. I did not mean to imply that you were repulsive in any sense of the word. That we shared something so personal is just not something I'm used to. I have another question. What would you like to know? Why do we dream of Malak and Revan? Perhaps because we desired to. Perhaps because they came to this planet and were strong enough in the Force to leave her a trace. Well, I certainly didn't want to dream about that them. That would not be my first choice either. But choice appears to be irrelevant in this matter. We dreamed about Revan and Malak either because we were meant to or because we needed to. There is no other way to look at it. Do you think we'll be receiving any more of these visions? With luck, we will. I would rather not rely on such visions to guide us. But when we have so little else to go on, and the galaxy hangs in the balance. Okay, that's all I want to know. We really should return our thoughts to business anyway. Well, darn it. We didn't really gain anything. Yeah, what do you want? Ooh, I was wondering if you had any more war stories. I was one of the best youth warriors in the clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Except Mandalore himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. What was your story? I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me, my heart racing with fear of the coming battle. Um, what happened next? The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop base, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. You dropped from orbit riding a droid? The exhilaration, the euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons was unmatched. An 80 kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. Wow. I want a Basilisk war drive. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I've satisfied your curiosity for now. Is there something else you want to know? No, I'm your good. Choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Yes, you are. And heck, I like that. So, yeah, so Candorus is, is just this badass guy who just flew out of a... flew in... running into a whole... Uh, I mean, he just flew out of the sky. It's pretty impressive to me. Alright, so we're going to get out of here. We're about out of time. I'll see you guys in the next video where we will go back to the council. This has been Pitching Ace 88. I am out.